of people have this complaint that our in our home we earn after earning our expenses we can't fulfill them we don't have enough we have shops we have business businesses we have homes houses and we say even then there's distress and there's problems and there's difficulty and commonly we hear this complaint from people and the reason for this is that Shaitan has instilled into our hearts this thing that whatever you will have a lot of, you will get most benefit. And then on this point, we try our most to get as much money as possible, get as many things as possible. Because the more we have items and things, the more benefit we see and we comprehend. But in reality, this is not the case. Rather, whatever there is, it is not based on the quantity it is based on the barkat the the blessings within it and this is what we've forgotten even if the quantity is less if there's less wealth less money but if there's barkat baraka blessings then alhamdulillah then the whole life of a person there's ease and everything of his remember in life in everything in your life whatever part of your life or facet of life home outside um, business, your house, whatever is related to you, then baraka, the blessings from Allah, is what gives success to a person. That's the reason why today we have everything. We have the items, we have the assets. But a person doesn't feel satisfied and happy. Somehow, other, somehow, other, that person he has issues, ups and downs, because he doesn't have the baraka, the blessings, and he is lost out from the blessings and the baraka. The individual. So barakah is not a thing that is hard for an individual to attain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He's given us such a great thing, then Allah ta'ala has opened the paths to attain barakah, the blessings. There's a hadith with the meaning that barakah, blessings, is such a thing that Allah ta'ala says that you can attain this, you can receive this, you can acquire this. The more you do my dhikr, the more you remember me, the more barakah will come to you. Subhanallah. If, for example, you shouldn't worry and have concern that you should have higher quantity. You should have the fikr concern to instill more barakah into your life. Hazrat Mulana Zakariya Sahib, Rahmatullah Alayhi Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith, he wrote in a kitab, he said that our houses, business, our land, and everything in the heavens, the skies, our madaris, our institutes, our masajids, Everything is based and succeeds and thrives on based on Allah's barakah. Allah Ta'ala says, dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, Allah Ta'ala in His name, in His dhikr, has instilled such a quality effect that the whole life of a person, everything is affected by dhikr and is dependent on dhikr. So for this, the individual, the human being, he should do dhikr kathir. That's what Allah Ta'ala has said, that do my remembrance, do dhikrullah, kathir, high quantity and barakah will come into everything of love. Your mal, your awlad, your home, your life, everything. You'll have maybe few things, but you will, uh, you will have a lot. Many houses we've seen that from outwardly, they don't have lots of things or items, but mashallah, they're happy and their system is, is progressing. Alhamdulillah. In the hadith is stated that on that piece of earth where Allah Ta'ala's dhikr is performed, then the inhabitants of the heavens look down and see the shine just like the moon and the sun. That's the barakah of dhikr. And I say this regularly that those individuals today who are online, mashallah, system of dhikr, and we also have the receivers in the masjids 
and that when there's dhikr, then install these receivers in your homes. And there's so much barakah, this is Allah's special fadl, that Allah Ta'ala's naheem is arriving to the homes. And do this kathir, high quantity, in abundance, the shaitani deception, that we don't have yaqeen, we don't have belief. And for yaqeen and belief, Allah Ta'ala has filled the Qur'an with the praise and definition of dhikr. The whole Qur'an is full. And how in many verses Allah Ta'ala has praised and defined his dhikr. Hadith are complete and filled with the praise of dhikr. But because our yaqeen, our faith is weak, we say, no, no, dhikr won't give us success. Let's do something else. Do dhikr yourself and encourage your uh, house folk to do dhikr, to learn dhikr. So much barakah Allah is instilled in his home that look, if you see that there is a scene of the day of Qiyamah, it will be a jeep, unique scene on the day of judgment, the hereafter. And the day of judgment will be, the, the, you can get no example, the hottest day. There's no example that we can use as comparison that the sun will be low, there will be sweat. It will be us just like we're sitting here, the same body, same physicality. And today that our body is so weak, that even a little bit of heat, that in our countries, look how severe the heat. And we just get scared, oh it's hot, it's hot. Puts us off. And the friends of Allah, their great sto- uh, glory and status, subhanAllah. Has a Arifi rahmatullah alayhi. And there was one, he's the, mashallah, sheikh, great teacher. And he was sat in the heat and some because they don't even have electricity regularly in our country somebody's doing this and that and he said why are you feeling down due to the heat he said he said that this is from the signs of Allah that this heat with this heat experience think about that heat that is about to come and it's going to come very quickly very soon here the fan will come in a little while the electricity will come back you'll switch the fan on but which fans will come there in the hereafter how will you save yourself there how will you protect yourself there and it's been described in detail, the extreme heat on the Day of Judgment. And that from millions of miles away, that sun that is so far away from us that we can't bear the heat. And imagine when that sun will come so close to us, that will be a hal, the same body. Physically will be sat, just like we are now. Then how will we absorb that heat then? But in such a heat, Allah Ta'ala has stated, Subhanallah, ajeeb hadith, beautiful, unique hadith. Rajul dhikrullah. Khadi. Tafadat Ainahu. These are the words of the hadith. That in this heat, a little bit of heat here in the world, we go out, we go to our home countries, uh, subcontinent, then when we get out, we look for a tree or some shade, we stand in the shade for a little while. And a person, you know, he gets uh, the impact of the heat, he looks for the shade for the tree or something else. In that heat on the day, imagine the heat on the day of judgment and people will be stood there, then obviously... In that heat, what tree will be there to protect us? What will we be there that we can get the shade from that heat? Allah Ta'ala states that I have prepared there a resource for you. There will be a shade there. Yes, but, it won't be, but there won't be the tree. There will be no tent there. So how will a person be protected in that heat? Allah Ta'ala said, according to the capacity of that heat, intensity of that heat, I've created a shade. That's not some normal shade. What will be that shade? It will be the shade of Allah's rahmah, mercy. And do you think that some normal shade can protect us from the heat of the hereafter? Allah said, it will be the special shade of my mercy and rahmah at that time on the day of judgment. And Allah said that in that shade, the special one qawm group of people Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, well, Allah will give them the shade and protection on their, who will that be? Who will those people be? Rajulu dhikrullah khaliya. Such people, such women folk, men folk, who individually here in the world or Wherever they get the opportunity, they do dhikr, they sit down, they're on their own and they do dhikr Allah, they remember Allah. Then Allah says, whilst they do dhikr, they continue dhikr and they, due to my love, their eyes become moist with the tears. This is the love and the khawf, the fear and the love, the fear, the tear comes into the eyes thinking. So he stated such people, Allah says, at that time I'll give them the protection, refuge in my shade of my mercy on that day. So what a great message for us people that such a place Allah has prepared in the hereafter if we do dhikr of Allah here and remember Allah khali in isolation or individually when we're on our own. Here a beautiful point the pious elders have mentioned 
The Allah says that continue to do my dhikr in khalwat in, when you're in uh, alone, solitude you could say. So and then for doing dhikr we should say then we're thinking that seek uh, solitude, loneliness when you're on your own and then do dhikr all the time. But Allah Ta'ala has also prepared the answer for that one. It stated there's such a dhikr that you don't even need to be alone or in solitude. That, that example was when a person is alone. And there's dhikr qalbi that is when a person is on his own individually. When a person remembers Allah in his heart, then he's an individual on his own. Your hand is busy in the world doing things. His hand is doing work. He's at his shop. He's alone. He's an individual. The dhakir always where he's in the world, he's alone. He's an individual. He's in solitude, whether he's working, occupation, etc. But his heart is attached to Allah. So what a great maqam Allah has given. He's not stopping us from work, from running our shop, or running our business, or going into the dunya. Allah has prepared such a resource that do dhikr in your heart and you'll be included amongst those people on the tomorrow on the day of judgment. They will have the refuge in the shade, the protection of Allah's shade. So dhikrullah is a great, great asset for the hereafter and for the dunya. And if you want barakah in all your actions in the world, do dhikrullah. And if you want in the akhirah to attain salvation, success, then do dhikr of Allah. So these both maqams are in front of us. Reality. We have time. We have everything. Allah has given us the opportunity. So dhikr that we do, dhikr qalbi that I'm explaining to you, dhikr of the heart, this is such a glorious dhikr that you are physically present in the world, there are people around you, but your heart is doing dhikrullah. But this thing, dhikr qalbi, you have to work hard to acquire the benefit. You have to have determination, not just by talking. If I say to you, okay, okay, let's go and do dhikr qalbi. Such a great... Uh, result, then you need a bit of determination, a bit of courage, a bit of hard work and effort. So the more you work hard on this and practice and do it regularly, then you will attain this maqam that always the dhikr of Allah will be performed by your heart. So for this, it's necessary to turn to seek a wali Allah, a friend of Allah, a teacher, ask him, how do I do this? How long should I do this? How much should I do this? And when you follow that tariqah, with that hard work, the more minute and effort you do, then you'll get to the maqam that your heart always will become a dhakir. Will be a dhakir. Dhikr doesn't mean that uh, your heart is beating, or you feel in it, or emotionally even in it. No. Dhikr is a latifa, and it's a very light thing, dhikr of Allah. And it's a very light action, a latifa, a point, a lesson. That it's just like this, that for example when we start doing this and we learn this and we work hard on this, then automatically that dhikr, it's continuing. It's not necessarily that you feel it, the heart's beating or it's not beating, etc. Some people think this, that, that I can feel it, etc. physically. No, rather that dhikr is continuing in the heart of that person, his heart has become alive. And when you're doing things when you're doing the lessons and the, the prescription that teacher's given, and when he explains to you, do it like this, and you do it, then you attain that maqam. You attain that status. So my brothers, Allah Ta'ala, He seated us here, He's assembled us here for His dhikr, for His remembrance, then learn dhikr, and work hard on dhikrullah. Work hard on dhikrullah. Because everything is existent, and flourishes, and thrives, due to the dhikr of Allah, whatever there is. May Allah Ta'ala do dua to Allah, pray to Allah, that may Allah give us love for His dhikr, for His remembrance. Ameen, recite the Rushi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Salatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mursalin. Shafi'i al-Husnain wa ta'a hawaiya sayyidin al-Habib al-Adeen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad al-Nabi al-Habiyya wa ajim wa ahad al-Mu'minin. Al-Ghiyati wa ahad al-Mu'minin. Allahumma salli ala wa ala Ibrahim wa ila al-Hamid al-Majid. Salam taslim al-Dai wa al-Nabad al-Qasid. Allahumma akfir lana zulubana wa zulubana wa hazlana wa jandana wa khatwa wa hamadana. Kulla zalika. اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمت ما أخذت ما أسرت ما علمت ما صفت ما تعالوا به أنت المقدم وأنت المقل لا إله إلا أنت اللهم ربنا أعطنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الحشر وقنا عذاب الميزان وادخلنا جنة أمانا يا عزيز يا قوة يا رب العالمين اللهم نسلك اللفة لا في المعاد في الدنيا الدنيا اللهم عينا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عينا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك 
ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قضاة عين وجهنا للمتقين إماما اللهم ربي الحمد ومحكم على بياني الصغيرة اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا واستغذينا وشائخنا وجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات على حياهم منهم والنبات في رحمتك يا رحمة الله سبحان ربكم بالنسبة ما يسفون سنة من المرسلين والحمد